Hi, I'm John Cox from John Cox's Creature Workshop and we're employed to create the physical slashes for the TV series Terra Nova. The original design and zebra sculpture was done by Neville Page and Jack Horner was the dinosaur consultant that helped with all of the fine detail for this. We begin our process once we've received the original file. We split it up into many smaller parts so that we can cut them all on our five axis mill. We start out with a block of polystyrofoam, EPS foam, and we overcut that by about five millimeters. We then put a very hard styling clay back over that, put the piece back on the machine and recut it. This gives us a sculptable surface so that all of the fine detail that's required can be put onto the actual sculpture. Once all of the pieces have been cut from the five axis mill, we then reassemble it like a big 3D jigsaw puzzle, sticking all the blocks of foam together and filling in any of the spaces between those blocks with more of the hard styling clay. Sculptors then get to work uh, with their small dental tools and start putting all of the detail back into the sculpture. The five axis mill can cut a shape that is absolutely identical to the original digital file, but it cannot give us the very, very small fine detail that really brings these pieces to life. So that process goes back to traditional sculpting and can take many weeks to get the piece to the actual finished stage. Attention to detail is the key to bringing dinosaurs to life. And so it's at this point that we go back to all of our reference on birds and lizards and have a look at all the fine details that exist in nature that we can utilize to breathe life into our dinosaurs. The next part of the process takes a long time and that's making all of the molds, the internal molds, the skin thickness molds so that we can make foam latex skins of the dinosaur that we can then put over all of our mechanics. So the process here is making mold walls, fiberglass molds, and then making certain that all of these pieces really do bolt back together again. While the mold making is proceeding, we then took the original polystyrofoam sculpture and did some quick paint tests on it to show Alex Graves, the director, and get some input from him on materials and finishes that he would like to see the final slasher with. Once the mold making procedure had been completed, we then start turning out all of our foam latex skins. Once the skins come out, there's a lot of um, seaming and trimming and repair work that has to be done on them so that they all look absolutely perfect. It takes a long time to do this part of the process as well and uh, we really do have to take care making certain that any of the seams are completely covered over and you don't see them. Once all the repair work's been done, we can then start pre-painting all of the skins so that when the time comes and all the mechanics are finished, we can then just pull the skin straight over the mechanical components and they'll go on as easily as a sock going onto your foot. This helps us keep on target with the very, very tight schedule that we had uh, in order to make all of these creatures. So we use um, traditional painting methods, airbrushes and small paint brushes to get all the detail in. And this is really only the first stage of the painting because this is where the animal looks very, very clean and perfect. And as you all know in nature, this is not what animals really look like. So for our hero slasher, we had the head movement up and down, uh, left and right, jaw open and close, nostril sniffs, the arms could move and the entire body could rotate and move up and down. We also had uh, a tongue that would go in and out. Any of the eye blinks or eye movements was all going to be achieved digitally. Once the mechanical components are finished and we have our pre-painted skins, we can start to do an assembly of the slasher. At this point, we've also had to look at all of the parts of the dinosaur that have got a lot of movement in them and we go in and we uh, cut up the internal fiberglass core that the mechanics are all fitted to and put in some additional foam 
uh, areas so that when the head turns and moves up and down, we don't get uh, very bad creasing in the skin. It's a process that really is trial and error. We go in, we, we put in foam, we see what it looks like, we take it out, we trim it back, we put it back in. Uh, and it's an ongoing process. For the slasher, we probably looked at about two days or so, just um, fitting the skins and making certain that uh, we could get all the movements out of the mechanics and the skin without getting too much buckling showing through and also without restricting the movement uh, of the mechanical components. And now we come to the final finishing of the slasher where all of the seams are covered over. Uh, we're just gluing on the wattle at the moment underneath the throat. You can see that's where we had the zipper to uh, keep the skin together and uh, we had that hidden underneath the throat wattle so when it went on there would be no visible signs of how we got the skin on. This particular dinosaur was also to have proto feathers which are similar to fur covering uh, a big chunk of his body so I had uh, wig makers make up the, uh, the fur suit for him and also uh, hand punch in a lot of uh, hair around the, uh, the face and the eyes. Getting the final colours was absolutely vital to bringing the slasher to life and there was a lot of consultation with Alex Graves about the strengths and the mutedness of some of the colours that were to be used. We also looked at the finishing touches like the quills, the small feathers around the eyes and the feathers that were up and down the arms as well. We also made a set of hind legs of the slasher for shots of it walking through the jungle. So this is the first tests of it to find out what its parameters were. Once we had fully finished that particular piece, this is a, again some test footage we shot in the workshop showing how it could be filmed to uh, give some great shots of it interacting with the jungle. The practical dinosaurs really do help tie the digital dinosaurs to a sequence and it's the interaction with a practical piece that is still very important in filmmaking today.